I guess they're saying that he, he yeah, there's a, there's a chance. Uh, you know, I, I I still don't think he's um, fully ready for games. Well, we'll 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 see today. Game time decision, right. as they say in, <laughs> in Vegas, right. I think. Right, when you look back to Tuesday night, look at a win like Illinois. Is that something going you know, to come March that the Joe Lenardi's and the oh. bracketologists of the world will look at as a signature win? Or right, Who knows? And I'm worried about December 7th or 6th. What's the date today? 6th. Yeah, yeah, that's all. I mean, that, you know, you, 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 we've played, you know, you had George in the mix, five what people would consider marquee name type teams, you know what I mean, in terms of postseason caliber teams. We're two and three against those teams right now. So we have to do a better job and you know, we have to keep improving, but in those games, you know, those are important that you play well and you're successful. Yeah. Those games against the Big Ten for the ACC teams, do you look at that, does that give you a chance to see where some of the ACC schools are now in their progression? Yeah, again, you know, I told you guys when it went to the ACC yeah. Big Ten, Matt, okay, six to six, does that mean the conferences are even? You know, only two teams, one on the road, North Carolina and, and uh, Wisconsin. Um, I'm not sure the matchups were, you know, identical to where every team needs to be. Um, but, yeah, you, you know, you get a chance to, you know, I got a chance to see some of those games. Um, at, least, at least bits and pieces of them on Wednesday anyways. Um, you know, and, 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 you know, I think, again, you know, two teams that are playing really well right now in the ACC didn't play in that. You know, two teams that are looking to move up in Wake and Clemson. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, so, again, uh, you know, it's, it, it's a great event. Um, but other than it just being a one-game evaluation, I think – you start reading in it more stuff than you need to if you do more than that. Could you Rock. see from the Illinois game just the excitement the guys had to have any carryover and just in the way you guys practiced the last you, couple you, of days? You know what? Monday's practice was, was good, and it was the first, like, full practice we had in about 10 days. Right. You know what I mean? And even though it was the day before, we didn't treat it like it. I mean, hmm. we went after it, and, and um, our guys were good, and our guys were good again yesterday, and, and we need to – we need to create practice situations where uh, obviously high levels of intensity, competitiveness, uh, put guys in difficult situations uh, where it's two minutes to go or, or four minutes to go in the half and you're down 10. Now your job is to cut into that lead before you get into halftime. And just, you know, those are situations that as you practice in the season, you, you, you keep using because you know you're going to see those in games. Rob made a big play towards the end of the game defensively when he jumped out on Rice to alter the shot a little. Mm -hmm. How is the team going with, with that type of help defense? Well, you know, pretty good. We switched that. That was on a ball screen. We right. switched that. And, and I think, you know, one of the things, um, to be good defensively, you've got to trust being able to switch at times and have big guys guard guards and little guys fight the big guys, you know. And, and we were able to do that in that game. I thought that was a critical point. Staff did a really good job of, of recognizing that we needed to get in maybe in those situations, and we went to that, and the guys executed it really well. So, I, you know, again, I think um, it's always a challenge when you play bigger lineups like we do most of the time, uh, you know, dribble penetration, or if you're guarding a four-man or a post player that's really good off the bounce, and we need to get better at that. What's your plan for next week during the final? Uh, you know, you got to give the guys some time to hit the books, right. you know, and, and uh, they'll have that time. And I always think that during finals week, especially as you get to the middle of the week, you know, getting in an hour sweat every day is good for your studying right. too, you know what I mean, to get away from the books. And so we'll do that. We'll do some more individual work and stuff like that early in the week, and then we'll start practice towards the end of the week once the finals were kind of heavy. Uh, front loaded in a lot of the finals next week. Because you don't play for so long, is it? I mean, is this game in some way important just to go into that period with kind of a good friend? Yeah, I think it's important on a lot of fronts. Right, you right. know, we talked about carrying on the momentum. We talked about okay, you know, really showing guys what we did well and and to continue to do that and and to tighten up some of the things that we didn't. Um, but as you said, you know, uh, finishing up this kind of. You know, that, that next segment is, is kind of a three-game segment with Kennesaw, Vanderbilt, and Charlotte before the ACC. To kind of end this segment, 
at if you can do it and be successful at seven and three, coming back off the New York trip with two good wins where you played well, I think that would help us. I think that would be good for our psyche heading into finals mm -hmm. and heading into you know where there's a lot more practice time than just game time, and I think that's important for the guys. What are one or two things you want to clean up from? Well, I think our offensive execution in terms of taking care of the ball in the, in the open court, have too many transition turnovers or transition force plays. Um, we want to run and we want to push the ball, uh, but we have to make good decisions. With that freedom comes the responsibility to make uh, good decisions in open court. And what ends up happening, if you have a turnover in the open court or you miss a layup or force a shot in the open court, more times than not, it's an open court situation coming back down because everybody's going this way, and now all of a sudden it goes the other. So that's one area we got to get better. And the second one on the offensive end, we have to keep making plays for each other, either off post feeds where you kick the ball out and get it back in or they score, or off dribble penetration where guys are moving, finding open areas, and the drive leads to a really high percentage shot. That would be on the offense. And on the defensive end, we got to always tighten up our overall core defense, which is guarding the dribble, guarding the ball screen, and, and making sure that we're contesting shots. And everything that always covers it in that is both ends on the glass. But, you know, offensively, those would be the, the keys. And if we can do that, and that's against man or zone. You got to, you know, just because a team goes zone, you cannot eliminate your penetration. You cannot eliminate your post feeds. You need to do both those. In your, your half-court offense, uh, how do you feel your, your big men are progressing with their, you know, the little things like spacing, passing, shot selection, that type of thing? I think they've been pretty good. I think they've been pretty good. I think there was a stretch where they didn't get the ball enough, and so there was a little, uh, if I get it, I better do something with it. I, who knows when I'll get it back type of deal. You know what I mean? And that's understandable. Yeah. Uh, that is understandable. Uh, those guys pound and, and work. Uh, and and that, that's why, you know, uh, as we get better, you know, the guards and everybody will understand, you know, you, you got to, you know, you got to feed those horses once in a while. You know what I mean? You got to give those guys a, and, and, and we're better when we do that. Um, at the same time, our guards need to stay aggressive. But in terms of the biggest development, you know, you look at Daniel Miller knocking down those jump shots, feeling comfortable taking that. There was no hesitation on that move at the end of the game. You know what I mean? He wasn't looking to pass that thing out. He was going to figure out a way to get a shot up. You talk about progression as a player. Uh, you know, Robert early in the season, I think, was kind of trying to, you know, maybe instead of letting the offense create the shots and him being ready to score, I think there was some forcing, which is fine, you know, because you know, he's one of our better offensive players is Marcus. And so you got to give those guys some lat latitude in terms of maybe being overly aggressive in some stuff. But every one of those plays he made was the exact play that should have been made at that time, like those throwback jump shots and different things like that. He needs to be ready to shoot those, and he has a green light every day on those. Was that shot that Daniel took? Was that, I forget how it unfolded. Was that call for him? Well, we got the ball on the wing, right. and the wing's number one job is to feed the post. And he right. did a really good job of feeding the post. Uh, Robert was at the high post. He dove to take away the help, and it was they, they decided on that particular case to guard him one-on-one. -on -one. We were in really good positions if they went down and double-teamed him. I think I said after the game, you know, there was a point in there, do you call a timeout or not call a timeout? And I just felt we were in a really good offensive flow at that point. Guys had made good decisions the four or five previous plays. And so um, Trey had the ball. Uh, we went to a, 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 one of our actions, threw the ball back, got the ball reversed. And, you know, a lot of times on that action, you get a one on one in the post, and that's what Daniel had. I'm sure I'm forgetting, but I can't remember Daniel taking a shot like that in a moment like that, uh, you know, down one. Uh, uh, probably, his, I think it's probably his first game winning shot. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Here, um, you know, so that was good to see. <laughs>